Hi and welcome to a new video. In this video I wanted to quickly go through uh, the advanced settings and do a review of your standard Vodafone uh, Gigafast uh, router. Um, so as we know this router is um, provided to you for free when you sign up for their Gigafast or for some of their other uh, fiber services uh, via Vodafone. Uh, so if you've got home internet with them that you, you're going to receive this uh, router as uh, standard. So this one is uh, actually a Wi-Fi 5 uh, router. Um, so the actual um, manufacturer is uh, Technicolor and the model is normally in the UK is a THG 3000. It does have a Broadcom uh, CPU um, and it's, at, it's a dual core 1 gigahertz and it has around 512 uh, megabytes of RAM and the flash storage is 256 megabytes. So as you said, um, it does support on the 2.4 gigahertz band, it supports wireless B, G and N and then on the uh, 5 gigahertz frequency it supports Wi-Fi N and AC. It does have on the back um, 5 uh, gigabit um, Ethernet ports and it is also a modem is also built into it and that's a GFast modem. There are two USB ports so there's two, one on the side and one on the back and both of them are USB 2.0. So the specs of it are not massively uh, advanced especially as they're now the uh, Vodafone supply um, gigabit fast uh, ethernet um, well sorry internet uh, to your home. So um, you know we would expect perhaps a Wi-Fi 6 uh, router to come our way soon but as we said it's uh, is, is quite good it's not, it's not a, a speed wise I've not had any issues and things like that with connection um, as we said it does have 3x3 three three, and I think the maximum uh, speed is 450 megabits um, per second on the uh, 2.4 gigahertz frequency and on the 5 gigahertz it uh, is 4x4 four and it does support multiple in, multiple out, so MIMO, and it's a maximum uh, of 1,733 megabits per second. As we said, it does have the older 2.0 USB ports as well. The power on it, um, when I looked on the AC adapter, is 12 volts and a 2.5 amps. So it's not a bad um, router from the uh, Vodafone, because um, it does have like the... Uh, support of the actual uh, VoIP built into it and also it has the modem built in so it's capable of doing multiple things uh, but of course it's not as good as an external um, in a third party router that you'd get from Asus or anything like that or Netgear um, of course they, they are much more advanced and sometimes if you are on the gigabit like I am I've just upgraded it probably advisable once you've got your uh, internet set up and it's all stable on the standard ISP uh, router then you can change over to a third party but you will have to um, ask for details so if you are setting up a Asus uh, router um, or a third party one then you're gonna have to go to the Vodafone uh, online support and ask for the, your login details and then also you're gonna have to set up VLAN so if you are interested in me uh, doing a video on that, and uh, I know there is a few people that now uh, are quite more uh, advanced users um, that are joining Vodafone because they're getting bigger and bigger as an internet service provider in the UK, then just let me know and I can create a video around that. So as we said, this is the first time I've actually uh, logged in and I'm using my um, computer and I'm using Firefox to log in. So if you don't see this actually start up, um, you can just type in the 192.168.1.1 and it'll come to their login page here. So again, the uh, actual details here. So if I click on here, it'll show you on the bottom of the uh, router, it does actually have the details here and it gives you an idea of where the password is. So your password is different. Um, to your Wi-Fi password um, you will be under here where it says there for the following uh, password is for your admin so this is the password where you'll find to be able to log into the actual uh, onto the router so once you've found that password you can just type that password in 
and then hit the login button. When you first log into the actual main user interface, you may get some warnings up here um, about changing the default Wi-Fi password and also the login password that you've just typed in. As it says here, it's just for security reasons and it's quite good that they actually display this and everything. On the main screen, you'll see your uh, router here and then as mine is connected um, to the fiber, um, to the ONT box on the wall, um, you'll have Ethernet WAN in green. You'll see our here is quite clear and um, very user friendly. You've got two devices. So it basically will show you how many devices are connected to each thing. So you can see I've got a phone line. I've got the uh, 4G backup uh, USB dongle um, connected. I've got two that are plugged into the uh, devices plugged into the Ethernet and then two Wi-Fi devices connected as well. And you can see that quite clearly um, on hit on the front screen as soon as you log in. So that's really good to see. You also could have here's Wi-Fi 2, so that's your guest network. So again, if we just you can go and change these at a later date, but just remember when you do change them to make sure you um, write them down somewhere. Uh, to remember. So this is currently in basic mode. So I'll go through basic then I'll go in for advanced mode. So internet you can see you've got your firewall and then you have it automatically by default switched on. If it's not then I advise you to switch it on and always make sure this is switched off as well. So make sure this is grey. Next you've got Wi-Fi. So you've got the, the general schedule and WPS. So under general you can see you've got there your, you've enabled Wi-Fi networking, you've got enable Wi-Fi on and off button and then you'll have your details of your Wi-Fi network here as well and then as I said you can switch on the guest one as Wi-Fi 2 as well here. You can change the password by clicking here and then also the encryption but to be best is to uh, leave this uh, protection mode so that's the encryption to WPA2 because that's the most advanced one. Then you have schedule, so you, here you can actually schedule uh, when you would like the, as it says here, to be Wi-Fi to be switched off. So if you do want it to be disabled at night times or at certain times, you can schedule it by just switching it on here, hitting the plus, and then you can have the options here of every day, every working day, all weekend or individual days. And then you can enable or disable and you can name it and then do a certain time between it and save. So it's good to see there. Next you've got uh, WPS, so it does uh, normally WPS is actually um, switched on by default um, and so hopefully it should be, if it is you do see it on then it's advisable to switch it off because it is a bit of a security concern as I mentioned in other videos that it's not a very secure way of connecting. Next you've got sharing. So you've got here about hard drives and printers. So you can plug in your printers and your, any uh, USB hard drives in there and it will share that as well uh, across the network. So once you plug them in, you'll be able to see them underneath individual USB ports as well. Next, we come on to settings. So as we're in basic mode, it is just basic. So you've got there to change your hub's uh, password or to reset the password. And then you have the on and off button here to switch off the LEDs and they're quite not very strong anyway the white LEDs on the uh, router anyway so that's fine so you can switch them off if you if it's in your bedroom or something then you come on to the last uh, option here on the menu is the status and support so this will give you your details of your network diagnostic utility uh, where you can look up things and also reconnect and then also about so that'll tell you all the details about your a router and then what is current firmware version things like that so it goes through on there so that's a really good um, basic overview um, on basic mode but if we go back to overview and then you change it to expert mode you'll see you'll have a lot more options going through when we go through the actual uh, start so it doesn't change much on the overview screen but once you go on to internet You'll now see um, a few more options. You'll see there now instead of just firewall, we've got a lot more options down the side here. So it's always good to see that it's got port mapping. So here's you can actually add uh, ports, so you can open up ports. So if you're doing anything 
um, like running a little server or anything like that or anything to do with your VPN you can then just click under static port mapping and then you can click the plus select if it's TCP or UDP or both and then you can put in the service name IP address it's actually going to on your internal network and then both the, the uh, port that you're opening up so that's always good to see that it gives you the option of there it does have a support for IP version 6 as well so you can add the information the same as there it does give you the option of opening up um, and exposing one device to the internet so again this is off by default and unless you really know what you're doing it's best to keep this off because when you do switch this on and select the device it is not protected by any firewall or anything and it's exposed all directly to the internet so you need to make sure you know what you're doing if not then leave that switched off it's good to see as well you've got a DNS so you can if you want to change it so it's automatic will set to Vodafone's uh, own uh, DNS servers um, and DNS is like a phone book so it will basically when you type in google.com it will go there and find out on the DNS server what the IP address is so you don't have to remember all of them all the time of course this will use the default one but if you want to change to something sometimes that are faster uh, like Cloudflare then you just type in the Cloudflare one or even if you want the Google DNS then you can type them in here as well so it gives you the option as well so that's really good to see that um, it hasn't been locked down again you've got the option for a dynamic DNS um, so that, that's a good feature than normal uh, you find on third party um, routers but on here as well so you can switch this on select your provider and then you can type in the details here as well um, so this will then just change your dynamic IP address to something remember like your uh, like media dot uh, your router dot com um, so you, you'll just remember it or something with uh, no IP if you have signed up to those then you do have the option for mobile data um, for so this is if you've only got your 3G or 4G um, backup USB dongle plugged in then you can click on that and it'll give you information as well and you can adapt but again it's best to leave this to as the default because this what is if you do have this nothing is you have to have the pro version of Vodafone internet service and um, that gives you the mobile data backup so if your internet goes down then it'll automatically switch over I think after a certain amount of time uh, to the using 4G so that's quite good to have next we'll move on to Wi-Fi so you can see here we've got again we've got a few more options we have a schedule with the now we've got Wi-Fi settings so here as you can see here you can change it to mix but again I would leave these all on default um, the only one I would change if you want to get a bit more speed is change this to 20 to 40 so some devices that can connect at 40 megahertz um, can actually connect at higher speeds um, but if you do have connection problems then reset it back to 20 but if you want faster devices swap that to 20 to 40 and again here it's already on the optimum uh, selection here so um, you've got there all the way up to 80 megahertz on the 5 uh, gigahertz frequency and then you've got Mac filter uh, so this is like a security um, so you can then basically on here you can stop device, new devices connecting to your network and it will only allow the current ones that you've got on there or the ones you add and it's just you adding devices by their MAC address so um, that's not like their IP address but it's a, a MAC address that each device has separately so that's good to see they've got these extra things on here they've got again the sharing and then they've got sharing settings as well under here um, so you can see here the different two different options that when you plug in devices your printers and your hard drives that it will share over DLNA and the uh, Samba protocols so that's always good to see and they're on by default again so now we've got a few more options as we said so we've got firmware updates so you are having any issues um, then you can check for an update by clicking here again we've already got the LED settings we went through before configuration so now you can save a previous configuration if you're going to factory reset it and want to load your settings back later that's always good to have 
and as it says here it is password protected so you need to make sure when you save your configuration file that you remember the password and in here is of course you can load it back up once you factory reset it and this is where you can factory reset it without using the button on the back also you've got the option here to restart it if you're having any issues and then you've got UPMP so as it says here it's universal plug and play but it does give you a warning here already saying about it's a security issue so it is on by default and I would advise unless you really need it it's probably best to switch that off I think they've got they've switched it on as default as because it's much more user friendly um, but if you're more security conscious then I would advise to switch that that off uh, as it does say there and then you do have device fingerprinting as it says here this is on by default and this just identifies your devices so it knows it can look up your HP printers to your Dell printers your Canon printers your iPhone or your uh, Pixel or whatever Samsung phone you have so it'll be able to give you more details of what's connected to your network so that's quite good you have then have public subnet again unless you're really advanced you probably will not need to know, know about the uh, routing of the uh, subnet addresses um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that you do have the option though and then you've got your local network so this is where you can change the IP addresses um, on here so you can set the IP address so if it does come to fault of 192.168.1.1 you can change that I know like on Asus uh, routers you can change their one is default is 50 and once you've updated it there then you come down here and you can see it's automatically updated the uh, DHCP server that gives out the IP addresses to your devices connected and then it does have a separate IP address server as well for your Wi-Fi guest network as well so it separates them so that's good to see for security and as we already said we've gone through the Mac filter then lastly we go to the the uh, status and support again as we saw before now gives you a bit more you have the your status the fiber status diagnostics now you do have an event log um, so you can see information that's actually coming on there and uh, warnings or errors if you're having any problems and then you do have a reconnect button as well so if you want to reconnect to your services and then again we, we went through the about so as you can see it adds a few more features on a few things that you can do of course it's, it's not as advanced as a third party router that you'd get from another uh, company like Asus or Netgear um, or TP-Link or anything like that so if you do have a, a Wi-Fi um, and you do need to have multiple devices and their Wi-Fi 6 enabled then I would advise perhaps once you've set up and standardized everything and you made sure your internet is working as you want um, then swap over to a third party um, router just be warned that Vodafone do say they will not support you so if you have any issues with your internet you might have to plug in your Vodafone uh, standard that uh, router back into onto the internet before they'll help you so again that's the option so we've gone through and as we said here you've got the basic expert and then you can just log straight back out once you have finished um, changing and then you come back to the uh, welcome screen here Okay, so that's just I mean, a quick review of the advanced features. Um, there wasn't a huge amount there, and just going through the specs and everything else. It is a well-built uh, router, and, and it's got enough Ethernet ports, I think, for the most standard user. It's just if you are an advanced user, um, and I think or enthusiast, then you probably will not, this will not do you, and you probably will be looking to upgrade this and then change to a third-party one. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's been a bit useful as usual. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and have a great day.